All right, so we're going to start with chapters one and three right now. Chapters one and three I deal with introduction to chemistry and scientific measurement. So obviously we're getting into the basics of chemistry and of course how we're going to measure it, science, the numbers, etc. Uh, first of all, what is chemistry? And chemistry by definition is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Obviously I'm super excited about chemistry and the things that it de de defines and describes. Um, whether it's the, the chair you're sitting in, whether it's the, the, the stars in the sky, all those things are made up of matter and therefore chemistry can define it. In addition, because living and non-living things, all of them are made up of, of, of matter, chemistry deals with everything. So of course, all sciences work together, the physics and of course how things, uh, uh, how things move in, 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 the, in, the, in the solar system, how they move on, on the planet Earth, gravity, et cetera, et cetera. Physics is great. It uses chemistry together in conjunction. Biology, the same type of thing. The, the chemistry of plants and, and animals all work together. Um, I like to think about pictures. I mean, when you think about the changing of the leaves, which we're going to be seeing pretty soon, changing of the leaves, that's the chemistry and, 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 and the photosynthesis and all those different things that are going on. I love to cook. And, of course, you can see Elmo and Elm emerald here that's a tongue twister anyhow but em emerald cooking with elmo cooking chemistry i think i love to cook so much because it's so much related to chemistry how food sears how when you put a, a lobster in a pot it changes from greenish to red um playing around with different types of of, of heat and acids and bases uh, one of the things i love to eat i'm probably going to get this from coco loco soon is some ceviche and ceviche of course is shrimp scallops fish cooked in just acid it's it, the actual you'll see the changing of the 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 chemical structure changing of the fish itself cooking with lime juice or lemon juice um, additionally plumbers need to know a little bit about uh, chemistry uh, their name comes from plumbum okay, i hope everyone knows what plumbum stands for PB, of course, is lead. So, plumbers named after plumbum. Firefighters certainly need to know a great deal about chemistry as to what type of chemicals uh, can be used to, to extinguish flames. Certainly, you don't just use water for everything. Grease fires need different types of, uh, of extinguishing uh, materials. Hairstylists, beauty salons certainly need to know a lot about chemistry as well and needless to say doctors nurses the health related fields as well and we could go on <gasps> throw up a little explosion there um i know you're already saying when are we going to blow something up in this class well it'll happen in all good time but um certainly uh, the hydrogen bomb and the uh and and explosives explosions uh, relate to chemistry as well so moving right along if we talk about the scientific method i think you use the scientific method every day whether it's uh, the first couple of weeks here of, of school and we're saying, okay, I'm in Mr. Marquis' class and I'm heading down to lunch. Is it quicker to go through the basement area? Is it quicker to go around? You're using the scientific method. First, you make observations. You're down to the lunchroom and you're last in line every time. That's an observation. Uh, I'm last in line, I'm not getting the, getting the, the food served to me at a, at a time where I would prefer. So you think about hypotheses, pr proposed explanations, explanations for the observation. I'm last in line. What could it be? Well, am I going the wrong way? Am I taking a route that leads me a longer way than, than another route? So you can experiment. The first day you, once you start to, to go through the scientific method, you walk up through the atrium and then down the senior hallway and go to the lunchroom. Maybe the next day you go underneath by the basement area, by the locker rooms and weight room and head up that way. That's an experiment. And as you experiment, you can revisit your hypothesis. Am I making it there at the exact same time? Maybe it's because Mr. Marquis is letting me out late, so therefore it's not the route that I'm taking. Um, but then you, if, if indeed the route is what you're seeing, then you can make a theory. Theory is a well-tested explanation that it describes... Um, kind of uh, what, you're, what you're seeing in your observations, hypothesis, and experiments. 
once all this has been explained and the theory is well tested, et cetera, et cetera, you move to a scientific law. Now my scientific method description and analogy deals with going to the lunchroom, but obviously the scientific method is used every day in science as well. In your textbook, you can refer to page 22 and there's a, uh, a more detailed explanation on scientific method, but you've been dealing with this since middle school um, and hopefully you can just see it's in, in, in use. What I want to do real quickly is get into the units of measurement. I'm such a stickler for labels and using units. When you're asked, how long did it take you to get to school today? You're not going to say, it took me 15 meters or it took me 15 inches. Okay, so the units of measurement are super important. And once you start to understand the unit of measurement, then in terms of some of our uh, problem solving, some of our uh, equations, they explain how you can solve some of those problems. So let's rapidly go through these. We have SI base units, and SI stands for System International. It's, oops, System International. And the system, it's an international system, of course this is French, uh, a little bit of everything right in here. Uh, System International is basically uh, metric units. So we're going to take a look at the metric system and some of these units that we use in the science and chemistry classroom. Let me just make an adjustment too so that to my some colors. I want to get some different colors. Let's get to a yellow here. All right. So let's now, oops. Let's take a look at some of these units. Mass, and the unit of mass, we're going to see in a minute. Length, temperature, time, counter quantity, electric current, and luminous intensity. Let's go ahead and take a look at what those best base units are. The mass base unit is the kilogram. Of course, the abbreviation is kg. It's the abbreviated... Um, Excuse me, it's the metric unit that we use for the, the uh, SI unit. Of course, there's the gram and uh, microgram, etc., which we're going to take a look at in a minute. But the base unit for mass is the kilogram. Length is the M. I would imagine we all know that's the meter. Temperature is K, of course, Kelvin. Time is in seconds. Counter quantity, that's one that I'm, I would imagine we haven't seen before. That's in the mole, M-O-L. The abbreviation for mole, I know it's not a very big abbreviation, we just dropped the E, but indeed that's the abbreviation for counter quantity. We're going to see that as we move through the year, uh, very important for chemistry. Electric current, we're dealing of course with the amps, amperes, again, amperes or amps. And luminous intensity, we're not going to see a lot, we will see it again, that's basically describing how bright a light might be, uh, deals with candelas. And candelas is CD. So those are your units of measurement. Um, I'm going to pause right